Hello, uh, my name is Andrew and I'm a co-founder of uh, WSDR project. This is the uh, project uh, web-based SDR platform for learning, hacking, prototyping, and collaboration. So uh, previously at the GERCON last year, we presented a new concept, how uh, can, like, we can use, we can work with the SDR differently. So in a few words, we wanted to change general approach in the workflow because the traditional method like uh, requires a lot of effort and have some uh, drawback and obstacles especially if you're a uh, beginner it could be a problem so uh, a year ago we started uh, to work in um, to develop in the platform that aims uh, to like eliminate all the drawback and some limitation um, specifically with the SDR hardware. So the idea was pretty simple. Uh, anyone should be able to start using software-defined radio hardware with uh, minimum knowledge. So basically, we want to uh, get rid of the installation, software dependencies, and other distributed features that may come along the way. Uh, so today, I want to share with you some progress on the project and showcase some uh, demo so yeah, let's go. Um, surfing on the web, we came across a web USB technology. And since modern web browsers are no longer slow, uh, it enables direct communication between uh, USB device and web browser. So we started to incorporate our own um, software libraries into, uh, hardware support libraries into the web. So making our SDR just plug and play. Uh, along with that, we thought it would be cool to create some basic application and visual tools. So uh, thanks, Web USB, uh, thanks to WebAssembly and MScript and Project for that, because now you can write code on C++, uh, C Sharp, Rust and Go, and uh, uh, port this application into a web. So. Uh, yeah, right after we developed a few applications, one of our friends said, uh, hey guys, why don't you create something big like a full autonomous cellular network in a browser? And uh, since we all have a telecom background, uh, we decided to give it a try. And uh, we picked Asma Comstat for that. And it, was, it wasn't obviously at all uh, how to put all the components from the Asma Com into the web browser. And, uh, Here's begin our journey. Um, the complete 2G network from the Asmacom consists of the following components, uh, which each one is a separate Linux process. So uh, firstly, we remove all the GPRS and H component, and, and uh, then we, the secondary issue was to like, uh, figure out whether to put all of the components into the wrap right away or start with the simple step like streaming IQ data uh, directly in the cloud where the, all other components uh, were running. So, um, so yeah. Uh, however, this uh, approach requires you like stable internet connection and predictable uh, latency. Uh, the next step was compile Osmo TRX. And this was the significant uh, task because uh, uh, because the threads responsible for the SP function uh, were pipelining data in a small fraction, like two millisecond, and this works okay with the Node.js, but completely not with the Chrome. And the main problem was in an unpredictable uh, unpredictable latency between Osmo TRX component and Osmo BTS component. So we. Uh, resolve this issue by putting both component on dedicated web worker um, within a web browser. And then this is eventually how we uh, were able to make it happen and uh, finally uh, make our network stable. Even the smartphone can become a base station. So yeah, let's move to the demo. Uh, here's the WSDR uh, main window application. I always locked in my account. And here's the server network app. I have my SDR right here. So let me plug it in. OK. Sorry. Got small 
a small space here. No. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, it has recognized. So basically, how it works from the end user perspective. Here's the source. Uh, we choose as a source our web SDR, can act. Then we set configuration, which is RFCN for the base station. We pick like, any configuration and hit run. That's it. This is how we making a uh, base station out of the laptop. So here's a simple phone. It's raining on my phones. Oh. And they usually, yeah, you could see on the log that the phones uh, has been already registered. Uh, but usually you can go just to settings, network, and choose the network manually, and there's going to be like an Asmacom. So this is how the network works. And since I know my numbers of this phone, I can easily like call from this phone to this phone. And you can see in the lock that call is processing. Zoom it? What do you mean? No. <laughs> I mean, like, there's so many, like, there's the, the, so small space, so basically, I mean, like, I, I don't want to break anything. Yeah. Hello. I mean, like, anybody can, like, come, come over and test it. If it is. <laughs> so, yeah, basically, the base station processing happening in the browser while the core network itself in the cloud. So, with all that being said, you can deploy open source uh, private network, like, worldwide easily and make a call, like, between all of them, like, easily because your laptop is becoming your uh, base station. So, yeah, this is the, this is the 2G call uh, based on Asmacom stack available uh, online um, and working from the, yeah, from the web, sorry. Okay, so let's get to the platform. The platform, uh, the, pro the platform itself is an extensible framework uh, up and you can run a different application. So far, we developed uh, 12 ready-to-use applications, such as a, a spectrum monitor, or a signal analyzer, AM and FM receiver, and, uh, and even AI signal detector. So, um, yeah, let me just click on there. So, uh, since like machine learning is gaining uh, a lot of like attention nowadays in our industry, so we were curious too. And uh, as far as I know, the, the TensorFlow GS with the GPU accelerator became available in web GPU within the browser. So we took our our own like a simple approach with the, using a convolutional neural network on IQ diagram to detect signal. So basically, here's the pretty much same thing. Um, I'm picking my device and hit run. Oh, yeah, sometimes it can it's a reload the application. Yeah, this is this is what happened when you uh, do an upgrade your platform before the talk. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, like you see, uh, this is the AI, uh, AI analyzer lock and it's detecting my uh, mouse. So, Bluetooth and yeah, it's a proof of concept, working great. But however, you need to learn this uh, algorithm to get more uh, detection. Okay, uh, so what's next? Yeah. Uh, Another great thing um, is a share device and uh, receive the signal remotely because uh, uh, since the application received data directly from the hardware, you can receive remote streams uh, over WebSocket as well as you can share your device uh, like within a, a, as easy as just sharing the link. You can see right here, this is the link. 
This is the link to my device. If I would like to share the stream with anybody, I just uh, send this link to, to the person who would like to get access to my recordings. And now we just uh, did, like recently did a uh, great showcase with a friend of mine. He's like in Georgia at Belize right now. Georgia is a country and uh, he's uh, streaming a local radio station and we can receive this stream. Like pretty much the same, uh, same process. So just instead of the uh, hardware on the source uh, dialog box, we're choosing the streams, which has already been set up uh, in, in the streams in the streams in the, in the main window. Anyway, so basically, yeah. We... <laughs> this is the ra this is the radio station coming from the Belize, uh, from the Georgia. So also you can highlight the specific area. Uh, it's worked pretty well when you do the FM receiver with the with the uh, different parameters. So yeah. Wolfi shield. So um, another great feature we implemented is a, a simple, uh, simple storage, uh, the file st storage to record, uh, uh, to, to store and record all your uh, signals. So let me. Oh, right. So so far uh, we can. We can add like storage type as a, uh, our, or our own internal uh, storage, WSDR storage, or we can use a third party Azure so far. So we're working to get like more providers of the storage in our platform, but it, it works pretty much like the same. So we, we pick the, the type of the storage, we set the container. So if it's shared container, you can pass like here a link from a person who's sharing this link and you will be able to uh, access uh, recordings of this person. Um, if it's private, it's self-explanatory, it's private private container, you can, yeah, um, upload, you can upload your file, files like from the computer or you can um, edit file right away, like SIGMF configurations files. So, yeah, and it's pretty much useful tool because let's say you wanna, uh, analyze the signal and um, when you do the signal analyzing you just pick in this uh, file from your storage directly so this is the uh, Bluetooth uh, low energy signal and here's the different parameters you can tweak you can look at the signal also you can decode the signal you can highlight Area, change the modulation type. Some, some tweaking stuff here and the uh, decoder. Yeah, and as you can see, there's an information of decoded signal right here from, from the stream. Um, so yeah, uh, also uh, the great feature of the platform, uh, since like it's web-based, I mean you can up, you can upgrade your like firmware directly from the platform. So this is as simple. Unfortunately, I, I unplugged my device and I can show you, but believe me, it works. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so the other part I want to add that. Uh, So all the tests, all the development has been uh, done on our own SDR. However, we're working toward to get uh, YMSDR and XTX Revision 4 and 5 supported by, Apple, by our platform. And uh, I believe most of the people here have either devices. So basically, I encourage you guys to sign up for an updates at the website or the Twitter. Because once we officially release this platform, you'll be able to use your device to test it out and send us feedback and let us know how it goes. So, and anyone if interested in learning how we made a different application, also please go to Twitter. There, there's going to be a link for all of these updates uh, with the greater details how we create uh, 2G um, 
cellular network based on Asmacom stack, how we use uh, machine learning to detect the signal, etc. So, yeah. Thank you so much. This is the platform. <laughs> Any questions, uh, guys? We've got time for a couple questions. Uh, yeah, great talk uh, and demo. Uh, my question would be, uh, as you suggested, it's for 2G. Can the similar platform be used for uh, like 4G, LTE, or Evo? Thank you. Sorry. Uh, again, please. Thank you. What, what? Uh, yeah, my question was, uh, like, as you mentioned, it's for 2G, yeah. the platform. Can the same setup and platform be used for 4G, LTE, or Evo, or even 5G? So Thank basically, you. we use the 2G Asmacom stack as a, a proof of concept. So, so far, uh, we're working toward to get LTE in the web, but uh, I mean, like, there's a unforeseen, like, it's an unforeseen future, so, but so far, no. There's no, like, LTE, um, like implementation in the web browser, at least in our company. Uh, and yeah, I, I forgot to say that now we didn't forget about the GNU Radio community. So basically, uh, we have a sp we have a component GRWSDI that that will be released as well as what uh, as platform, uh, and you'll be able to data stream like directly from the GNU Radio into the into WSDR. So yeah, just just before I forget. Any any more questions? But anyway, thank you uh, for your attention. You can catch me in the hallway, and I can give you more details and show something else um, from our platform. Thank you so much.